Hello, in this video, I'm going to be talking about long-term and late effects of radiation therapy. Before I go on, please subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out and you'll get to see all our new content. We put out about three videos a week, so there's always something new to watch. And if you're wondering if radiation therapy will be part of your treatment plan, go to yerba.com for your personalized report. So just briefly, I'll talk about what radiation therapy is and who gets it. Radiation therapy is high energy delivered to a particular part of the body. Unlike chemotherapy, targeted therapy, and hormonal therapy, it doesn't go through your whole system. Radiation therapy planning is very specific so that the field of radiation therapy is very carefully carved out, not literally carved out, but designed to affect just a specific area. We give radiation therapy after breast cancer surgery if people have had breast conserving surgery or a lumpectomy to treat the rest of the breast and decrease the risk of the cancer coming back in the breast. We will treat people who have positive lymph nodes or a larger tumor who've had a mastectomy and we'll, treat, we'll do comprehensive radiation therapy which includes more of the lymph node areas that drain the breast in hopes of decreasing the risk of the cancer coming back and in people with advanced disease, we use radiation therapy to treat areas where the cancer has spread to decrease or prevent symptoms from the cancer having spread. Radiation therapy, as I mentioned, uses high energy, and in doing so, it can cause both short-term and long-term problems. We've covered short-term, in particular, pain in another video, and you might want to check that one out. In terms of long-term effects or effects that occurred down the road, even many years after treatment, after somebody you know, may even have put this in the rear view mirror, radiation therapy can affect other tissues in the body. So I'll go through a few of those. Because radiation is a wave of energy given to the body, it can affect air, other tissues in the area, like the heart and the lung. In people with left-sided breast cancer, where the heart in most people is on the left side of the body, the heart is particularly vulnerable. And because the breast is, sits over the lungs, or in front of the lungs, depending on how you're positioned, radiation therapy can also cause some problems with the lungs. In general, late effects of radiation therapy are not inflammatory, but more fibrotic. So early on, we'll see pneumonitis or inflammation of the lung, or you might see uh, endocarditis or pericarditis, not so much with radiation to the breast because we can shield the lung and the heart, but the itis usually means inflammation. Down the road, long-term effects like fibrosis and an osis, so like I say, fibrosis, and so you'll see tightening or scarring of tissues that have been exposed to radiation therapy many years before. So uncommon in today's treatment planning, but if you were treated decades ago, you know, we have people commenting on our channel who were treated 30 years ago, you can have fibrosis of the lungs and you can have more like scarring. And so those later effects tend to be tightening and thickening of the tissues in the days before we knew how to avoid tissues of, like the blood vessels that supply the heart we could see problems with the uh, carotid arteries getting thickened or problems with the blood vessels feeding the heart getting thickened again we don't tend to see that these days when we radiate the breast and neighboring tissues it's part of the consent form, it's part of what you're told could happen, but the risk is exceptionally low with current radiation planning techniques. What about things like fatigue and fractures of the rib? In general, fatigue will get better when you're a few weeks out from radiation therapy. If you've had radiation therapy and chemotherapy and targeted therapy and surgery with reconstruction, you're going to have fatigue from many more things. So it can take months to recover from the fatigue associated with radiation and other treatments. In terms of problems with the bone, 
Radiation therapy, if the bone is included in the field, can cause osteoporosis. So in other parts of the body, if we radiate the spine, for example, because there's cancer in the spine, you can see bone thinning because of the radiation. In people with bone involvement from cancer, most of those people are on bone strengtheners, which will counteract the effects of radiation therapy on the bone. So if somebody who's has metastatic disease to the bone and needs radiation, it's very often the case, or usually the case, that they will also be put on a bone strengthener that can reduce the risk or even reverse thinning of the bone. There are cancers that can occur from radiation therapy. It's ironic, isn't it, that we're using cancer to prevent or treat cancer from coming back, and then we can also see cancers caused by radiation therapy. Now, these are quite rare, but as we've said before, when it's you, it doesn't matter if it's rare or not. It happened in you, so it happened in all of you. And the cancers that we tend to see occurring down the road are sarcomas. These are tumors of the supporting tissues. So in the breast, we can rarely see something called angiosarcoma. That's a sarcoma of the blood vessels. You may have never heard of these, and that's because it's quite rare. How these show up in a radiation field is usually deep purple, areas of deep purple, not red, but real purple. And these are treatable, but obviously these are rare, and so it makes it harder for us to say this is the best way to treat this. Most people who take care of people with breast cancer have seen fewer than five angiosarcomas in their entire career unless they specialize in angiosarcomas. If people have radiation therapy to the pelvis or the abdominal area, we can occasionally see soft tissue sarcomas. And these, of course, are devastating, but they're very rare. As people live longer after a diagnosis of advanced or metastatic disease, we're seeing them in more people. So people used to, after a diagnosis of advanced or metastatic cancer, die within one to two years. And so they would die before these sarcomas occurred. And now that people are living five, 10, 20 years, whether it's breast cancer or prostate cancer or other cancers, we are seeing more. So it's sort of a mixed thing. You're living decades, people are living decades, but that means they're living long enough to have these late effects. I've covered a lot. A lot of this is quite sobering, and I, I know these are serious topics. We at Yerba believe that high quality information is one of the best tools you have in your toolbox. To that end, if you want to get your personalized report, you can go to yerba.com, where we do put out content about long-term and late effects and how to manage them. So subscribe to our channel, drop a comment or question below. We get back to you within a week or two. And thank you, as always, for watching.